Hi, I'm Yeshua Marchuk, and you are watching the NCSY Alumni YouTube channel. This week's parasha, Parashas Chayisara, is the passing of the time of the motherhood of the Jewish people. At the end of last week's parasha, Sarah, you mean, or Sarah, our mother, passes away, and we see in this week's parasha, enters in Rivka to go ahead and marry Yitzchak Yavinu, Yitzchak, our father, to become the next mother of the Jewish people. At the end of the parasha, we see that Rivka is actually led into the home, to her new home, from, with Yitzchak. And Yitzchak brings in his new wife, Rivka, into his mother's home. It doesn't actually mean his mother's home, it means his, the new home. But what is the parsha trying to tell us over here? It's that Rivka comes into her new home, and the three special simanim that were present when Sarah was in her home reappear now that Rivka is in her home. What were those three? Nerot, candles, Isa, dough, and special Ananiya Kavod, special clouds that protected the home that she was in at all times. Let's analyze what these three were. The Nerot, the candles, they went ahead and she would light them on Erev Shabbat and they would stay illuminated all week long. It was miraculous. These two candles would stay an entire week until the next Erev Shabbat and then she would relight them. Candles on Friday night, today in our day as long as all times, they represented the Shalom Bayis, since we didn't have electricity for many, many generations. We would go ahead and be eating in the dark. Someone would cause to, to stumble, someone would stub their toe, and there would be a tremendous amount of pain, and then arguments would, would end up coming out. Who left such a thing laying on there? What happened over here? Why can't I find this? Shalom Bayis is secured through having lighting candles and having the home illuminated. The second special sign that we saw in Sarah's house that now reappeared in Rivka's house was Doe, Isa. What was special about this was that it had a special bracha that it went ahead and, and it flourished and blossomed tremendously. The third blessing that we saw in the home was that of the clouds of glory that went ahead and protected Sarah's home and again also reappeared when Rivka moved into our home. Let's go back and look at these three special brachas and how they relate to us here in, in our time. The first one again, the Nero, the candles. We see in the Nerot that, that it illuminated to bring that Shalom into the biases, which we do today. But they had a special bracha that it lasted the entire week. By the home of tzaddikim, of righteous people, they go out of their way to make sure there is Shalom bias there. There is illumination in the home by going ahead and looking past opportunities of getting into disruption and arguments, by going ahead and looking at everything on the bright side to an illuminated home. That's something that we all need to strive for and work to go ahead and to establish that Jewish home that we all want with, without arguments, without the bickering back and forth between one another. The second special sign that we see is that of the dough. The dough went ahead and flourished and blossomed. We know from the Gemara and Bea that we have our allotment set up for us of our finances the entire year during the week between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, except for three categories. Number one, what we spend on Shabbat. Number two, what we spend on Yom Tov. And number three, what we spend on our children's Jewish education. Those three th categories, we can spend as much as we'd like, and we are promised that we're going to be repaid for every dollar of that. However, everything else, we are allotted, and we have to figure out how we're going to spend it during the year. If a person goes ahead, and especially in today's day and age, takes that credit card and keeps swipe, swipe, swiping it, and they can't go keep up with their bills, what's going to happen is, once again, we're going to disrupt the shalom and the bias. Bills won't be able to be paid. People will start arguing, did we really need to spend this? Tension over here, bill collectors calling over there. The third special sign, the special clouds of glory that hung around the home of Sarah and Rivka. But with the Mepharshim, the commentaries explained to us is, is those were protective, protective clouds. And those protective clouds came over to us almost like as if they were shades on windows. We know that Avram Avinu's home was opened up on all four sides, just like the chuppah that we go to for our, on our wedding day. However, we also know that Sarah was a very modest woman, and so was Rivka. And because of that, if they were open on all sides, their modesty and the home's modesty and all the issues that go on within someone's home would become public knowledge. These special clouds became almost like shades over the windows. And the family's business stayed within the family and didn't become everyone else's public business. When a family goes ahead and keeps their own issues within the home, it also secures that shown by it's that much further. It doesn't need to become everyone's conversations out in, in the fields. So what we see is from the Nerot, 
from the Isa and from the special Anani, the special clouds, those three categories, is they all came because of the schut, because of the merit of our mothers. We also know that we refer to our wives as the akarat bias. We refer to the mothers of our homes as that corner foundation, the crown of our homes, that they go ahead and everything goes through them. And that's why these three special signs were connected to both Sarah, both Rivka, Rachel, and to Leah. Those were the foundations, and they are still the foundations of our Jewish homes. I wish each one of you a Shabbat Shalom, and thank you so much for watching us here on the NCSY Alumni YouTube channel.